Hello everyone, welcome to join space observation and the sustainability course. And today's topic is UAV photogrammetry for 3D modeling. And the lecture is Professor Jianyou Lao from National Chenggong University. And research interested are imaging based 3D modeling, digital photogrammetry, remote sensing, and the GIS. Okay, Professor Lau, please. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, very clear. Okay, uh, thanks for uh, the invitation from the TSU, and uh, this is my honor to give you a talk. And today, my uh, presentation is related to UAV photogrammetry for 3D modeling. And um, I, my uh, expertise is related to remote sensing and uh, photogrammetry. And uh, uh, I come from National Chang'an University, and uh, you are welcome. In the future, uh, you may attend to our university and uh, could maybe uh, study in our university as well. So uh, today, my agenda will be related to two units. So first one, I will give you a review of photogrammetry principle. Actually, uh, in our department, the photogrammetry has uh, about, uh, for the under, undergraduate student, there are about nine, more than nine hours, uh, I mean, separate into uh, three semesters. And uh, for the uh, graduate student, there are two more courses related to more advanced uh, technique about photogrammetry. So today I only uh, have one hour, so I can only give you a very, very uh, basic uh, principle uh, review. So uh, hope you can understand that is, I cannot talk uh, all of them uh, in a short time. So uh, and the, the second part is related to a uh, lab practice. So uh, here I will use the uh, HSOP, uh we call a uh, mentorship. So uh, before we start the course, I hope that uh, all of you already got the, my lecture note. I think uh, in the lecture note, here is the one page and uh, you may uh, download the uh, software first. And uh, the software has 30 days of trial license. So right now you don't need to have a license, but uh, you can try and uh, you can follow my uh, instruction and uh, try to uh, follow my, uh, so you can process uh, 3D modeling step by step uh, according to my uh, instruction. And uh, also you can also download, I have shared some uh, document and the data from the Google Drive. So uh, here is the Google Drive I share to all of you. And uh, here are, uh, there's two big stone, there are stone image and also a UAV image from our departments. So uh, later you will see that uh, the data and the, the lecture note and the, uh, the program. So you can download first before, uh, uh, during my uh, lecture, you can try to install program and download the data. So later we can uh, practice in uh, online. So uh, also here, uh, there's a tutorial uh, provided by the uh, HSOP. So there are a lot of uh, information related to the program. There are several, uh, we call a beginner uh, level and the intermediate level. So uh, you may try uh, in the future, there are more advanced topics. So you can have more practice about how to do the 3D modeling and not only the cross range data, but also the UAV and not only also image, maybe you can also uh, produce a dense crowd and uh, do some measurement as well. Okay, and uh, today I will give you uh, the sample image for practice. Here are some examples. So we attack, by, uh, attack the image by using the cell phone and then uh, we can produce the uh, dense point cloud and the create a 3D mesh model. And then you can have a photorealistic 3D model. 
So uh, today we only have the limited time, but uh, later I will give you more uh, demonstration if we have uh, more time, because the uh, computer uh, may take long time to process. So I will show you some more results using the UAV image. Okay, so uh, then uh, right now I'd like to give you the uh, principle of uh, photogrammetry. So because the image we are taken are in two dimensional, so uh, our purpose is actually an inverse process from photograph. Here we like to uh, reconstruct 3D after space from the 2D image. So before we do that, we have to understand and uh, um, calculate their relative or relationship. So we call a relative orientation between those two cameras. So if we know their relative orientation, and if we find a, a, a contact point like A and A prime, so then we can perform space intersection to get to the 3D object point. So this is the 3D, and uh, we I'd like to have more 3D point. Then we can reconstruct the 3D object. So uh, traditionally, this process is done by manually. So we can have uh, the stereoscopic monitor like uh, the picture on the left side, left hand side. So uh, people may uh, wear a glass and uh, synchronize with the screen and that uh, you can observe the stereo image. So uh, like uh, on the right hand side here, there are the stereo pair and uh, in between there's a overlap area. And uh, uh, if we find, uh, we observe a contact point, then we can uh, measure the 3D point. So basically, uh, if we like to reconstruct 3D service, we have to have an overlap between two images. So uh, if we couldn't see uh, one point, more than two point, two photos, so then we cannot uh, uh, have a 3D service. So like uh, on the uh, left side, there are no overlap. So we cannot do the 3D measurement. So basically, uh, like a traditional aerial photo, we can we have to take a photo uh, by using UAV or airplane. And uh, uh, for one capture, there we there's a field of view. And uh, for continue taking picture, so uh, continuous two pictures, there's an overlap area. So we have to be uh, careful to have a sufficient overlap. So uh, like uh, uh, more than sixty percent on the uh, forward uh, and the left and uh, if we like to cover a large area like uh, on the left hand side this uh, the gray area has to be uh, overlap otherwise you don't you will miss some information between two uh, strip so uh, this is for aerial photo and uh, for the ground uh, like cross range image we have to take data uh, for uh, be very casual carefully. So for example, uh, you couldn't uh, stand at some one point and uh, rotate your camera and uh, take your picture. So that means there's no baseline between photos. You have to take a photo in different place. And uh, for example, this is a facade. So I take photo vertically to the object. So in case you are taking photo like a room, so you may take photo uh, from this position and uh, pointing this face by this part, and then you can have a different position, and uh, you can cover the whole image, a whole in a room of the uh, whole uh, space of the room. And if you are taking photo like a, a sphere, a surrounding a, a sphere, so you take, have to take photo at many places, not only two photo, uh, four photos here. So uh, be careful, the photos need to be have a separate position. So we have a baseline between photos. And uh, you have to uh, better to normally uh, face into the object, okay? So this is basic principle of uh, image acquisition. So uh, actually from my point of view, the photo acquisition is the most criti critical part for fully automatic uh, workflow. Because right now, most of the software, they can process the image and produce 3D model in fully automatic way. However, if you couldn't take photo, uh, follow uh, the overlap, uh, to have a sufficient overlap and uh, uh, 
don't uh, also have a sufficient baseline. So if you don't follow those rules, then you may fail. So be careful. So right now, I'd like to show you uh, most of the basic uh, workflow of the, the full uh, digital photogrammetry process. So the first one is image recognition, and uh, the second one we call error translation. So uh, in, in in this future, in this figure, you can see there are some blue photos and uh, there are some uh, black line. The black line is actually the 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 uh, optical axis of the camera lens. So this means that uh, the photo are pointing this direction. So uh, you can see, oh, in this case, there are several photos taken vertically. And there are some photos taken uh, surrounding the building. This building was collapsed because of the earthquake. And on the right hand side is also the similar situation. However, on the right hand side, the, the building are peeled, but not totally collapsed. So there are some face facing down. The, the facade is facing down. So if you are taking photo vertically, you will not observe the facade. So in this case, we take photo uh, like uh, horizontally and the surrounding the buildings. So uh, you have to observe your object first, how to take a photo. And uh, then uh, we can automatically uh, perform an error translation to calculate every photo's position and orientation. Then you can uh, conduct a dense point cloud generation. So in this case, you can see the building was collapsed and uh, uh, however, some of the area has no point. So without a point, that means there's no sufficient photos to uh, observe this area. And uh, you may, uh, uh, in the future, if you have sufficient experience, you will understand how to improve, how to uh, take more photos in this area. If there's a occlusion, then you may uh, face this problem. So the, the next step, we will create a mesh. So uh, you can see there are some triangle between uh, the point. So every three point, they will create a triangle. And uh, you can compare the previous slide. There are some hole and already uh, filled. So they try to fill the hole for you and they try to make the uh, service model more complete. However, if you, the gap is too large, you may uh, not successfully uh, reconstruct the service. So be careful. And uh, next is the texture. So the texture will uh, observe by the photos. They will directly extract the color information from the original photos. So uh, right now, if this is we call a photo realistic 3D model. So you can uh, you can observe the 3D model uh, in different position, and uh, you can also perform some measurement if you have uh, the position and information. So in the beginning, the photos are taken by UAV. So generally, we have the initial position of the photo, so they can be used to convert to uh, create the. Uh, transform to a certain uh, map projection. So then you can have a scale and uh, you can do a measurement. So that is very uh, useful information. However, if you like to have a more precise uh, result, you better to make some control point. But in this case, we are trying to have a quickly observe the uh, disaster area. So uh, in this case, we don't measure the control point. So in other, uh, as application, you may need to measure and digitize the create a 3D model, we call CAD model. So in this case, it's a bridge. So uh, uh, under the picture, there are a lot of dense point crowd. So uh, they are all three dimensional information. So we can measure then and uh, 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 create a CAD model of the bridge. And uh, this is similar to the uh, traditional digital, uh, we call e-map, but this is 3D e-map, okay? Not only a two dimension. And uh, uh, before that, we also can create a digital uh, surface model. 
So the digital service model is a two dimension, a 2.5 dimension raster information. There has a, a certain map projection. Like in Taiwan, we are using TWD 97. So the DSM and the true ultra image are in the same uh, map projection and the same uh, ground sampling distance. So uh, from the DSM, we can measure the elevation and the, from the uh, true also image, we can perform digitization. So if we'd like to digitize the uh, building, the, the shape of the building, so we can digitize directly from the true also image. However, original image is we call uh, a perspective view. So from the perspective image, you may find some occlusion and uh, also find what we call the uh, relief displacement. So uh, from these pictures, you can see uh, the original image if you have a, a building or a tree with different elevation, so uh, with a certain elevation. So from the bottom and the top, they will uh, project to the different position on the original image. So those, the vector, the position uh, here, it's called a uh, relief displacement. So from the perspective image here, you can see the facade of the building. However, from the true also image, we will, you will not observe the facade. So you can compare like this one, there are facade. However, you cannot observe the facade from the true also image. So a true also image already has some map projection. So you can directly digitize and obtain uh, the e-map. Like this one, we have a road, river, buildings, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, land covers. And uh, uh, you can overlap the uh, e-map together with the true also image. So you can create um, a more uh, realistic uh, image and uh, uh, together with the vector data. Okay, uh, the general rule of a space intersection is to derive the 3D uh, information. So I uh, just mentioned here we have to uh, observe, uh, we have to estimate the exterior orientation and the interior orientation of the cameras. So we know the uh, perspective position of the uh, camera, like uh, the blue point here. And uh, if we find uh, an object from the photos, there's uh, uh, another small point we call image uh, contact point. And the, here we have uh, image measurement. So uh, from the image coordinate, we can derive uh, two lines or two rays. So from those two rays, they intersect in, uh, and obtain a 3D point. So this is a very basic principle uh, we call space intersection. So this, this, this process is similar to traditional plane surveying. Uh, uh, for example, in the total station and the theater light, they are observing the distance and angles. And uh, if you know those two positions uh, of the satellite and uh, you observe the same point, so then you can create uh, a character, the 3D coordinate of the position. So here we are using trigonometry and the space intersection. And uh, the, the advantage of uh, the plane surveying is that they use the telescope. So they can measure very precisely at a long distance. However, if you measure, uh, some point with mistake. You have to reinstall the total station and uh, reinstall, uh, recalculate all of the network of all of the, uh, the stations. So that means you are not easy to remajor. Okay, if you make uh, some mistake. However, if you are using photogrammetry, photogrammetry you are using the camera and uh, our observation is the image coordinate as shown here, you only observe the point on the, uh, the conjugate point on the stair photos. However, you need to estimate the EOP, uh, exterior orientation and the interior orientation. And uh, then we can perform space intersection. And then the, the drawback of uh, this photogrammetry uh, methodology is that if you have a long distance uh, object, their image resolution will be poor than the cross one. So that means the accuracy will be different from the cross part to the farther uh, object. So th th that is the uh, problem. And also the, the angles, the angles uh, for the longer object, 
their uh, geometry is weaker than the cross uh, one. So anyway, there are some drawbacks. However, the most advantage uh, of the photogrammetry is that we can frozen the whole things. So we can frozen the, all of the object on the, at the, the moment. So in the future, after 100 years, if the photos are still exist, you still can do, redo the measurement. You don't need to uh, retake the photos. It is not possible. Uh, one hour ago, the, the target already changed. So you cannot redo the photography. So however, if you have already taken the photo, uh, then after uh, a long time ago, uh, later, you still can redo the measurement. Okay, and uh, you don't need to retake the photo. So uh, the most important part of the photogrammetry is that we have to uh, use the collinearity uh, equations. So this equation is try to connect the image point, object point, and uh, try to use the uh, mathematical model to uh, connect them and uh, try to uh, apply this equation to uh, many applications. So uh, as I mentioned that from the perspective center and uh, the image point and the object point, they are collinear. So because the, the light are traveling in a straight line. However, our camera is uh, in different media. Uh, the lens are different to the air. So there are some refraction uh, problems. So it will make the the straight line not straight. So we have to do some uh, uh, lens distortion correction to, to make it uh, uh, follow the coordinality conditions. So uh, here uh, I don't want to give you the uh, how to derive the coordinate equation, but uh, you have to uh, understand uh, this is the final equations. So uh, there's uh, equal signs on the right hand side, they are majorly from the object space. And uh, uh, like uh, the X, A, Y, A, Z, A, this is three dimension. And uh, on the left hand side, this is image space. So one image coordinate, S, A, Y, A, okay? One image coordinate, S, A, Y, A, and uh, we have uh, two equations. So here we include the, uh, we call the principal point and uh, the focal lens and also the exterior orientation parameters of the cameras. So they are in, there are three rotation angle in, inside of the M11, M1, M3, M3. They are nine uh, rotation element. And also uh, X, O, Y, O, Z, O, they are position of the perspective center. So basically you just need to know on the right hand side of the object space. And on the left hand side is the image space from 3D project to uh, 2D, two dimensional. So we are taking photo. This is the, actually the process of the projection from 3D project to uh, two dimensional. So there are many parameters involved. So I will not give you a more with the detail. However, you need to know that this equation can be used for camera calibration. So uh, here, additionally, we need to add the data S and the data Y. So the data S, data Y include the radio lens distortion, centric lens distortion, and then maybe sometime you have to include the advanced spherical uh, diffraction and the fine deformation, etc. However, anyway, this is very useful for uh, camera calibration purpose. You need to include those uh, IOP and uh, uh, then uh, during the air triangulation, you can perform set of calibration as well. And uh, you, you can also obtain the EOP. EOP, uh, 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 you, we, you, we will use the bundle block adjustment to, uh, to obtain the EOP. Actually, as I mentioned, the camera calibration is also conduct the bundle block adjustment. But uh, uh, for the camera calibration, we have more additional parameters. So uh, like uh, the density parameters, so they can be obtained at the same time. And uh, uh, we can perform space intersection to derive a 3D coordinate. And also for single image resection, if we, you on, if we only have one single image, we still can use this 
uh, equation to derive uh, EOP, the exterior orientation. And uh, if you like to obtain the true also image and the uh, texture, so we can also uh, uh, using this equation because we have we can use the 3D mesh and the to back project to the image to derive the, the, the RGB color information. So then we can perform, uh, we can obtain the uh, also image and the, the textures. So uh, the lens distortion is very critical problem for photogrammetry and particularly right now we are using UAV. So, so the camera is, uh, we call consumer grade. They are not precise and, uh, and the, some of them are very cheap. So the lens distortion uh, are generally exist and that you have to cope with this problem if you like to have a precise measurement. So there are two, generally there are two kind of uh, lens distortion and uh, generally they are derived, described by the radial distance. So uh, this equation include K1, K2, K3. So they are uh, three part and uh, they are derived uh, according to the radial distance from the center of the uh, image. And uh, uh, there's another uh, lens distortion called eccentric lens distortion. The, because the, the light passing to the lens and the, the lens has some manufacturer problem, so the, print, the optical access may be not perfect. So because one, one single lens contain many, many lens, each lens has the same problem. So there, in, in the end, the actual, uh, the actual optical access will be not ideal, not a perfect stretch line. So we have to uh, consider this situation and uh, uh, using some mathematical function to describe this kind of uh, distortion. So we call P1, P2. Okay, the centric uh, lens distortion is P1, P2. So uh, this is uh, uh, just to give you the idea that the, uh, the optical axis is not per, uh, 90, uh, 90 degree perpendicular to the image plane. So we call a decentric lens distortion. And uh, right now we are using the CMOS most of the, of the camera. Uh, right now, and uh, sometimes we have to consider there are some deformation on the lens, uh, sorry, on the, uh, the CMOS chip. So, uh, for example, this uh, perfect, perfect square, but uh, right now, at the projection, they may be distorted in this way. And uh, on the S direction and the Y direction, they are different scale. So, we, uh, we can use the A1, A2 to uh, compensate the form deformation on the uh, image space. So what, it, what happened if the lens distortion has not been correctly? And uh, uh, so for example, uh, here is the lens, uh, radio, called radio lens distortion. And uh, this is the real object point. If there's no lens distortion, it will project to here. However, there's a lens distortion and it will uh, change the position to this position. So combining with the perspective center, if we, you use the uh, wrong position, you will space intersect to this position. So that means you will obtain a wrong object space and wrong object shape as well. And uh, because we are using the coordinate equation, if you don't, you don't have a correct lens situation, you will obtain incorrect uh, exterior orientation. And if you are like to do the multiple temporal, uh, like a deformation, surface deformation change analysis, your surface model already wrong. Okay, here the after space already wrong. So you will obtain incorrect surface deformation information. And also if you like to obtain the texture information, you will back project to the wrong position and obtain the wrong texture information as well. So be careful, a uh, lens distortion correction is very, very, uh, very important uh, process. So for the point, uh, for the camera calibration, then, uh, uh, sorry, for the error triangulation, the first step we have to perform the relative orientation. So the purpose is to try to obtain some contact point. Like uh, here, we have a stereo pair. We have to measure some, uh, some of the type point. 
So more than time point is necessary for uh, one stair pair to obtain the relative integer. However, right now we are using the feature point matching, we can obtain a lot of uh, type point. So the, the reliability and the accuracy could be increased. So that is the benefit by using the uh, digital photogrammetry and uh, by using the uh, feature point and matching algorithm to obtain the high accuracy result and the high reliability result. Because for a fully automatic process, reliability is very, very critical. If you don't have a reliable result, your fully automatic process result will be inaccurate. So uh, after relative orientation uh, uh, reconstruction, we obtain a stereo model. So you, this stereo model can be rotated, uh, shifted, and uh, maybe the scale, change the different scale. So there's no certain, uh, we call a scale and orientation. And if you would like to make it to the absolute uh, orientation, you will need to have uh, some ground control point. Or if you have uh, the initial prediction of the uh, photos, like the UAV, if you are using UAV, you have the GNS information. So we can provide this information is initial prediction. So you can also obtain absolute uh, orientation. So basically, this is a uh, seven parameters transformation from a model space to a ground, uh, absolute ground position. So there's uh, some uh, scale, uh, uh, scale uh, transformation and the rotation. Anyway, there are seven parameters transformations. So as I mentioned that if we, we can use the coordinate equation for space intersection. So for example, here we have uh, two, uh, two photos. We already know the EOP and IOP, and we observe the, the uh, image coordinate on the left image and the, on the right image. So uh, this, uh, the, uh, this image coordinate can be manually measured or automatically uh, matched by a certain uh, algorithm. So from those two uh, equations, uh, for one photo, we have two equations, and for two photos, we have four equations. So we have four equations, then we can solve uh, three unknowns, x, a, y, a, z, a, by using the least square adjustment. However, you have to be cautious that uh, the, the image uh, taken uh, with certain uh, triangle. So uh, like uh, here, this object, here we have a uh, long distance, so, and uh, we have a triangle, here is the inter, uh, Angle uh, we call convergent angles. So this this here we have a photo, two photos to observe the same point. So uh, you can see the triangle is very small here, and uh, you will observe a longer, a larger uh, arrows on the range direction. If you like to improve this problem, you better to have uh, more photos and uh, taken at different position and the larger convergent angle. So by you. Uh, additional photos taken uh, from the other side, and uh, you can create another array, and the, it can, the, the error range can be shortened. So that is, we call a, 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 a stronger imaging geometry, and uh, the space intersection error will be reduced. So uh, because right now we are using UAV, so we can uh, have a more image, so uh, sometimes we have uh, uh, end depth with 80% to 90% and the side lap with 60%. So we can have a higher completeness because some uh, ground objects have uh, occlusion. And occlusion can be compensated by uh, large more photos. And uh, also uh, we have more, uh, more uh, redundancy because one position can be observed by more photos. So we have the higher redundancy, higher reliability, and the higher robustness. So because of the robustness is higher, we can detect the errors. So uh, we can in remove the errors as well. So in the end, we will obtain higher accuracy result. So uh, because of, we call this is a multi-ray photogrammetry because uh, this is very useful for some application. 
particularly uh, like uh, the dense image matching, we can perform uh, pixel wise the dense matching. So we can create more complete uh, ground object surface. And uh, uh, also, if we like to create a true also image, we can have a more complete. Uh, we call, uh, because of occlusion problem, we can compensate from the other uh, photos. So uh, here we we can create a more uh, complete DSM, and actually from here we can obtain the D D D DTM. And uh, uh, if we have, uh, uh, if we like to create a true also image, then we can also apply the DP D digital building models, or uh, we call canopy height model, or a digital surface model. For uh, then we can create a true also image. So uh, the for air triangulation, uh, sometimes uh, the from the computer vision point of view, we, they call structure from motion. So in the beginning, we take a lot of photos. So uh, they are photos. So we call a camera, camera motion. They are moving. We are moving the camera and the surrounding object. And the, in the end, we reconstruct the scene geometry, geometry uh, in three dimensional. So uh, this we call a structure from motion. So uh, basically, we have to track the 2D features. So uh, as I mentioned, from the stereo pair, we have uh, to obtain the contact point more than five point. And uh, then we can reconstruct the relative orientation. And uh, if we have a sequential image, then we can estimate the whole three dimensional info, uh, in models. And uh, uh, we, after we reconstructed the, uh, obtain the exterior orientation, then uh, we can uh, obtain the 3D models of the object. So here is the example that uh, for a two, uh, a two photos, we are using the feature point matching, we call track, checking of the type point. So here are some blue line and some red lines. Red line are actually outlier, not a really uh, reliable contact point. So uh, the so if we like to obtain uh, to con conduct the structure for motion, we need to have uh, more than two image. Uh, that has uh, that's why I ask you to acquire a higher overlap image. And uh, uh, if we like to do the uh, feature point checking, we need to do the. We have to assume there are some uh, pixel uh, correspondence. There are some cut point actually, and uh, they assume there's a projection model. Uh, we call a perspective, uh, perspective mathematical model. So then they can uh, implement the projection model into the uh, two dimension, uh, two from photo to the other photos transformation. So this is another example we call a tracking features. So in the beginning, we will detect the feature point, like the corner, like a, like the line segment. So we like here we have some red cross. They are the contact features. So we have to detect those features first, and then they can use some algorithm to perform a matching, like a, a surf and the sift. They are scale invariant and the rotation invariant and the illumination invariant. Because particularly for the cross range photos, the photos can taken in different position. So the scale of the object may be different and the, some of them are rotated so like this one the scale of the building the size of the building are different and that there are some certain rotations and the, sometimes the image may taken uh, with uh, some object has some reflections so uh, it may cause illumination problems and the, this kind of the feature detection algorithm can cope with this kind of problems so basically, such of our motion is very similar to what we call a coordinated equation. As I mentioned, this is the object space and the project to the image space. So the, the idea is very similar, but the, the equation they used are different to the coordinated equations. So uh, in the end, they will apply the bundle block adjustment. That is similar, that is actually the same in the photogrammetry. Okay, and uh, then later, we can reconstruct the surface by using some uh, dense image matching algorithm. So here, like uh, the HGSOP, they are using the multi-view stereo algorithm. 
And then there's, there's another one we call a semi global matching. This is very popular and uh, very, very famous uh, density matching algorithm. And their results sometimes are better than the edge uh, software. And because we can uh, here, uh, after the dense match, we already get a lot of dense bone crowd. So then we can construct the mesh. So like in the window photos, and uh, we can obtain the texture like on the right uh, photos. So this will look like a, a real uh, object on, in, in front of your face. Okay, uh, I'd like to give you a, a standard operation procedures for the 3D modeling. This is only my suggestion, maybe uh, in different situations that will be different. So in the beginning, you will conduct the UAV image acquisition, and uh, also you will collect the post information. Some of the uh, UAV provide you not only the position, but also the attitude. But uh, most of uh, us, we are only using the position. Okay, but uh, some of you may be, uh, if you the, uh, the provided the attitude is accurate, you can also consider to use the attitude information. And uh, uh, the image equation, equation procedure is very critical. This is essential, but also very, very critical. Particularly, our goal is for fully automatic process. As I mentioned, you have to be overlap between two photos and uh, uh, also uh, have a baseline and uh, uh, to be has more uh, overlap as, as possible. And uh, then, then we can use the uh, structure for motion to align the photos. And uh, as I mentioned, it will create a lot of uh, feature point, a type point by uh, based on the feature point matching. And uh, it will obtain all of the image coordinates on all of the possible images. So if one point are uh, observed by more than three photos, then that will be uh, give you more reliable result. So you better to obtain uh, match photos between uh, match point between uh, more and uh, more photos as, as more as possible. And uh, uh, during error triangulation, you may need to manually mark some ground control point or checkpoint, or maybe you have to measure some scale bars. So this is the only manual uh, process, process, process here. We like to have fully automatic, but uh, this part generally is not, uh, cannot be avoided. However, if you have uh, some markers recognized by the uh, program, so you may be able to fully automatically uh, measure, uh, detect the marker and the measure uh, given a certain uh, already known coordinate. So then you can have the fully automatic process. However, this is only possible for the uh, cross range object. For UAV, the image resolution is not sufficient. So generally the whole target cannot be recognized. So it cannot be main, uh, automatically measured. And then you have to consider how to perform camera setup calibration. If you, if you already pre calibrated then you don't need to do setup calibration, but uh, you have to guarantee the camera is uh, reliable and stable and accurate. Okay, so uh, then you can use pre calibration result. So if you like to have a, a setup calibration, then you have to be careful about how do you uh, take the photos. Because the uh, in all, uh, the there are so many parameters, there are some correlation, and uh, you have to cope with these uh, 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 co correlation problems. So you may take need to take photo in convergent geometry and uh, take all taking photo in different uh, attitude. Okay, and combine vertical or oblique image as well. So that will be better for setup calibration. And uh, if you have uh, already make, uh, mark some control point and checkpoint, so you can conduct the accuracy uh, assessment. Later in the uh, web tutorial, we cannot conduct this part, but I will give you uh, some demonstration. And uh, then uh, we can perform fully automatic dense image imaging to obtain 3D point cloud. And uh, sometimes the point cloud has some uh, errors. So uh, additionally, you can remove 
those noise at the point cloud. Some of the algorithm can detect the noise point cloud automatically, but uh, this is not for the meta ship, not yet. And, uh, and uh, also some application you may need to do the classification of the point cloud, like uh, separate them into the ground, trees, buildings, road, waters. So uh, this kind of uh, algorithm, uh, some of them are implemented in the uh, meta shape, but uh, maybe the results are not good enough. And uh, maybe you need to use, utilize other uh, algorithm to, to conduct uh, better accurate uh, a point crowd classification. So if you can classify the trees and the buildings, then separate from the ground. So from the ground point, it, uh, only you can obtain the digital terrain model only. So if you include the tree buildings and the, the others, then you can create a digital surface model. Okay, so the point crowd classification is important if you like to obtain the digital terrain model. Okay, so then uh, if you like to create 3D mesh and the texture, then you can uh, directly using the point cloud and uh, you can uh, obtain the texture from the photos. Okay, and uh, so for some application, you need to, you need digital service model or a digital travel model. So you can uh, interpret from the point cloud classification result. And uh, if you already got the digital service model, then you can uh, create the also image and uh, you can obtain the seamless mosaic uh, result. Okay, uh, in this website, you can uh, find some example that I have made uh, and the store on the sketch web. There are several uh, Ground object that are that are score for the uh, for the museum. So uh, you, uh, anyway, this is for, for your uh, reference. You can observe them later. And uh, there are a lot. Uh, okay, here you can obtain more example from my uh, experience. So as I mentioned that in uh, we have. In our department, we have uh, more than nine hours of photogrammetry and remote sensing. And uh, actually, they are very important for practice. If you like to have a, a begin, become, become an uh, expert, you better to have a more exercise. Because the more exercise, you will know how to improve uh, later. OK? So uh, I'm wondering, uh, at, all of you has you already installed the program or not? So right now I can move. Let's uh, have uh, some uh, lab exercise. Sorry, let me reconnect to my computer. Yeah, maybe take uh, this time. Is there any uh, question from the audience? Is there any question so far? Yeah, I'm connecting to my computer, so I'd like to give you some of the example that I have already stored. So since you don't have any questions, so let's start to uh, do the lab exercise. Oh, sorry. So this is the first example I took using the, uh, my cell phone. And the, the, the content is only two stone. And then uh, let's start the uh, edge stop. So I hope that you can follow uh, my step to, to do the practice. So in the beginning, uh, I can, this is the uh, interface of the uh, meta shape. 
And uh, uh, you can see here this uh, workspace and the chunk. That chunk is uh, like a, a project. Then later you can create multiple chunk for different project. Or you can have uh, a duplicate sum of them for a practice. So in the beginning, I will import, I will drag the work directory and uh, into my uh, MetaShip. And uh, it, uh, in the beginning, it shows that if you are using the single camera or a four dimensional. In the MetaShip, uh, if you have uh, uh, four dimensional data, you can, uh, be, you can create. So four dimensional means that you have a three dimensional model but in different time. So those different time data can be stored in different uh, directory. However, right now we only have one camera, so we just choose the single camera. So uh, here you can see in the beginning, you can see here the, the chunk. Uh, under the chunk, you can double click and you can observe uh, the image content. And uh, in the beginning, I hope that you can go to the tools. So in the at the bottom of the tools, there's a preference. Yeah, you be be careful here. Do you have any GPU? Yeah, if you have a GPU, because the uh, three in under the three D uh, processing, it's very uh, we call computer consuming. It it take a long lot of time in computing. So you better to have uh, some uh, GPU card to do that. However, uh, if you have a network, that means if you have uh, several computers, you can connect all of them and uh, using the network processing. That will be that is very uh, amazing part in the uh, uh, meta shape because some of the uh, program like uh, the Pixel 40, they don't have uh, this ability. So uh, here I just suggest you to use the uh, enable the GPU to accelerate the uh, processing. And uh, uh, in the beginning, you have to set. So here I create a, a project called Spawn. Okay. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned that uh, here in the beginning, we will perform a line photos. So let's try to do that. And let me explain a little bit about the, uh, the these parameters. So uh, there's a generic pre-selection. Generally, uh, we can select a generic version that will be more, uh, uh, that the program will select the the photos very close to you uh, to the target photos. So if we, we later we will perform pair by pair uh, matching, and uh, what image will be selected? They, it will select for you and uh, with uh, higher uh, sufficient uh, image for overlap and uh, reference. So if you choose reference, that means you have uh, initial position information. But uh, right now in this case. Uh, we don't. Uh, we are not using UAV image, so we don't have uh, the reference. So you can uh, disable. And uh, the accuracy here, I suggest you, uh, because here we are only for practice. If you take, uh, if you like to have a uh, higher accuracy, you can choose the highest. But uh, it will uh, take long time. But um, for uh, for balancing, I I can choose a high. And uh, Sequential means that we take photo in sequential and uh, uh, every two photos we have overlap. So be careful, if you choose sequential, you cannot disconnect the photos. That you cannot randomly take photos in different uh, uh, target. So you better to have a, a overlap between every two photos. Uh, if you have a GPS, then you, have a, you can select the source. But right now we don't have any source, it's, so it cannot be choose. So uh, if you have already done pre uh, calibration, then you append the EOP previously, so you can use the estimate. So right now, because we don't, uh, this is the first time, so we use the sequential. But anyway, uh, right now I will not choose the reference. 
And uh, the key point limit, that means that uh, how many key point or feature point you want to extract from one image. Okay, from one image. So uh, I, I will choose uh, more than 4,000. So basically we can choose 4,000. And the uh, uh, type point limit, that means uh, every two pairs, how many photos, uh, how many key points will be matched. So uh, basically I, I will use zero because uh, it will utilize the most of the type point that can be matched. Okay. So exclude stationary type point that is only for some target that are located on a rotation, uh, like a rotation, rotation table, and the background are in static, in stationary. The, the, the background still has some feature, but uh, not move. So in this case, the target is rotation, but uh, your background are not rotate. So in this case, you can exclude those type point on the tag on the background but right now we don't use the rotation table so we will not check this part for guided image matching it will try to match the more uh, type point on the homogeneous area because a high resolution image if you take a photo in ground in cross range you will obtain very high resolution image and the, the feature may be not sufficient so they will try to use the guided image matching to give you more type point. And the adaptive camera model is for the image that is not uh, taken uh, in sufficient uh, overlap or uh, only in one, uh, one straight line. So there's no, not a block. So we call weak imaging geometry. In this case, this is not suitable for camera uh, self calibration. So, however, right now we are taking a convergent image, so we don't need to apply the adaptive camera uh, model fittings. Okay, so uh, this is my setting, then I will conduct the feature point matching. So, you can see the detail here, it's quickly detected a lot of feature point and uh, try to match the type point. Okay, it's already finished. So from the uh, model panel, you can see some each three-dimensional point, but not, not easy to identify what is the target. Okay, and uh, on the left-hand side here, there are perspective 30 degree. You can press five on your keyboard, you can press five to change from perspective view to also graphic. Yeah, you can take a, a look and the change. So uh, sometimes I like to use the also graphic that is more easy to observe the site information. And uh, uh, let's change to the image here. So from the image, you can see uh, some blue point and uh, some of them are, are white point, some of them. So uh, the blue point is the matched type point, and uh, the white one are embedded type point. So you can check here to see them, are they observe, try to observe or not observe them. So uh, you can see some information because from the blue point, you can see uh, some in, they will cover the whole image. So try to double click on the other image. So like this one, the, the upper part contain less photos, less type point. So uh, we can use the reference. Here on the lower part, there's a reference panel. You can switch from workspace and the reference. So from the reference, you can see some information in the end. So here I, I will move the projection to the very beginning and the arrows. So the, the projections 
is actually the the type point, the number of type point measured in uh, in photo one photos. I'm I move them to the uh, at the beginning of each photos, so I can click on the projection to sort. So you can see the minimum number is uh, two hundred thirty four on these photos, and uh, the maxima is one thousand. You can see here a lot of type point. So the most important one is the the minima one. If there are less than one hundred, you better not to utilize these photos because they are not sufficient uh, reliable type point. And uh, you can also see there are uh, errors. The errors is uh, back projection errors from the three D point three uh, D coordinate to your image point. So there are some errors. So let's take, take a look, uh, let's sort the errors. You can see the, the largest one is 1 1.8. And you try to uh, double click and look, look closer. And you see what happened? You can see the image are blurred, right? And let's double click on the others. Uh, 1 1.3. 1 pixels 1.2 they are also blurred okay so basically you are if the image are blurred then the type point matching result will include uh, introduce large errors so i will suggest you to select all of the uh, image that are blurred and uh, in the future we will not utilize them for uh, dense matching, matching and uh, texture generation. So you can select them and uh, disable. Okay, so you can see this is very good techniques how to detect the blurred image. So using this index, the errors index, and then exclude those points like uh, larger than one pixels. The 1.1, 1 .1, this one, this photo is a little bit blur, but uh, after observation, I think I, I can use this as well. Okay, oh, this one is not good, so I can disable. Yeah, you can check some of the image, maybe larger than uh, one pixel. Uh, generally, they have a larger uh, blur effect. So uh, you, I suggest you to exclude uh, the blur image in advance. Actually, in the in the meta shape, there's uh, there's uh, uh, we call functions. You can check out the photos here, view photos, and uh, from the view photos, you can see the detail. And uh, in here, you can see the quality. That's a colon called quality. However, right now it's empty. So if you like to uh, estimate the quality, you can uh, go to the uh, tools. Uh, sorry. You can select all of them and uh, uh, use the quality tools to to uh, give you the idea how uh, how uh, the image quality is, but uh, here estimate the image quality. But uh, I actually, from my experience, they cannot give you very precise information how to select the blur image. So uh, I just give you the another option. You can conduct the align photo first and uh, choose the larger. Uh, the image that contain larger uh, projection errors. So then you can exclude the blur image first. Okay, now this is not complete. Let's try to, uh, because you can see the 3D model, there are so many points at the background, very long distance, still have some type point and uh, very long distance far from our target. So I like to uh, select some, remove some type point that is not good in geometry. 
So here in the model, there's a tool called gradual selection. So this gradual selection, there are five options. So there, uh, the reprojection error is basically from the 3D and the vector judge to the uh, 2D. And the sum time point may be uh, matching error is larger. So it will create a uh, larger reprojection errors. And uh, for the reconstruction uncertainty, if you have uh, a shorter uh, baseline to a shorter baseline and a longer uh, range. So the baseline, uh, we call base to height ratio is very small. Sorry, a uh, base height ratio is, uh, if, if you have the base height ratio is not good enough for 3D reconstruction. So then we will eliminate the name. And the image count, and that means uh, for one type point, if you have how many photos are matched. So if you have more than three photos, then that point, that point will be have higher reliability. So uh, generally, if you have uh, two point, photo, one point uh, matching by two photos, then I will remove those points. And the projection accuracy is uh, from the uh, object space. Uh, what is the accuracy on the object space? So uh, basically, my my step is to uh, choose the reconstruction uncertainty, and uh, it can you can see I can move the straight hold, and you can see if I move higher, some type point will be selected and. Uh, becomes a uh, uh, pink, right? So the pink point is uh, selected. So generally, I, I enter 20, and then you can see some type point is, is very long distance to the center of our target. So those type point, I suggest you to remove them. And actually, from the uh, button left part, you can see 900 points were selected. In total, there are more than 6,000 type points. So I can remove them by choosing this one, delete selection. So I delete them. You can see the type point already deleted. So go back, okay, delete. I come back, did it? Okay, so now you can see the uh, some type point are not uh, already removed. So uh, because the observation has already changed, so I suggest you to re-optimize the cameras. Here, there's a, an option on the, the toolbar we call optimize camera, okay? So here you can see there are some camera parameters that you, which one would you like to fit? So if you check, that means you will fit. So fit F, that means you will calibrate the focal lens. So here you can see K1, K2, K3, and the fit CSCY. CSCY is the principal point, and the P1, P2 is the eccentric lens distortion. And the B1, B2 is the deformation, fine deformation. So uh, you can try to use those parameters suggested by the, the software so far. However, in the future, you better to understand uh, some of the parameters may be not necessary. Okay, but right now, uh, let's try to use those parameters first. Okay. And uh, it's already changed. So right now, I suggest you to do one more step for the gradual selection. Yeah, in the gradual selection, I will uh, apply the projection accuracy, and I also choose twenty. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can see here again. If I move uh, the threshold, it some of will be some of the type point will be selected. So I directly enter 20, and uh, I again, I delete, and again, I 
optimize the camera alignment. Okay, so generally I only do those two steps. However, if you have a lot of type point, you may consider to remove the image count with two only. But because our photo is not good, uh, not not enough. So if you are, if I set that image count too, most of the type point will be removed. This is not good in our in this case. So I will not do do this. However, I suggest you in the future if you have a high overlap image, then you better to remove type point with image count equal to two, and they leave uh, to keep those point with more than three photos. So I, I will cancel this part. Okay, let's go to the panel here again. So let's try to sort in the projection again. And you can see that now this photo has uh, more than 100 point. That is the minima one. So uh, if the image high point larger than 100, so that means that the result is good enough. And also check out the errors here. So you sort again, some of the type point with larger error already disabled, okay? So most of them are less than one pixels. So I, then I think this is good enough for the uh, 3D modeling purpose, for air triangulation purpose. So this is the first part I I suggest you to check in the future. You you should not just process a line photo. You dense phone crowd, blah blah blah. In no check. So that means you have to check this first. Okay. Okay. Right now, uh, if you have already finished this part, then I will conduct the dense point crowd matching. So you can see right now, this is the site of the target and uh, you can check out. So you can see there's a box we call regions. The region is the process region. So uh, generally I will uh, move our uh, model. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention right now we don't have a control point and we don't have a scale and that we don't have a real position of uh, those 3D models. So uh, on the right, uh, lower uh, right hand side, can you see there's an X, Y, Z? So this is up to space. When I move, it's also move. So I like to move to, uh, to make it more like uh, observed from the, from the air. So uh, if you press seven, you can see the X, Y, Z. This is X, Y, Z, uh, the plane, the screen is on the X, Y plane, and the Z is pointing to you. So I like to move, rotate our object, and uh, uh, to make it more like uh, aer photo views. So here you can see on the panel, you can rotate the object. So you can see right now, I already pressed seven. Sorry, let me show you how, what this means. Okay, in the model predefined views, you can press seven. So that means you are observed from the top. If you press Control Seven, it's view from button. Okay, you can press one or three. You can view from uh, the right or from the front. So, for example, one, three, seven. Okay. So I like to rotate this object. Look like uh, observed from the top, and the from three. You can see if the the ground is in horizontal and the press one again to rotate okay to make it more like a, a horizontal plane and the seven 
font button, a font font tab. Okay, now you can see this is my uh, I already redefined the three D object space. And right now I want to define the region where I want to produce the dense crop. So here you can reset the regions. Okay, reset. So it give you an idea, give you a suggestion where you can process the data. It will estimate according to the type point. But right now you can see this those uh, frame is not not uh, horizontal. Okay, so if I, I press three, you can see on the side they are not in horizontal. So I like to rotate the uh, regions. So you can rotate region. Okay, so uh, let it move. Look like uh, uh, you are in in UAV. Look like uh, taking take data in UAV space. So this, you can process it like this. And uh, actually, my habit I like to rotate the region and then make it arrow to uh, the X Y frame. Yeah, just only approximate. And uh, you can resize, you can resize the region. So if you press resize, then you can change the region where you're going to process the region. Yeah, you can also press three to change the height. Yeah, because of the button at under the ground and there is no point so there is no need to process data under the ground it will take you longer time to process so you better to resize the regions to avoid some no data area so it can accelerate the processing okay so right now i have already defined the object space coordinate and also define the processing regions. So now I can produce the dense corn crowd. Actually, if you like to have a, a 3D mesh data, you can directly move to a built mesh. Built mesh. So from built mesh, it will perform uh, create a build a mesh from the best depth maps in case you don't need the point cloud i suggest you to build the mesh directly from the depth maps that will be give you a more quickly result so i can choose the quality in high and the face count in median so if you would like to have higher quality then you can change the face count and also high uh, ultra high quality but right now we are only in practice so i will leave the median only and uh, also calculate the vertex vertex colors so let's try to do this so you can see it will generate the depth maps so uh, the depth map is actually the disparity between two photos and uh, uh, only this uh, only store their disparity values and uh, in the future we can use utilize this disparity for space intersection intersection and uh, here they will generate the mesh and uh, directly from this uh, mesh values Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, that this part take a long time. So you better to have a GPU. So you can see here, they are using the GPU to accelerate the processing. If you don't have the GPU, you may take a long time. But uh, anyway, uh, in, the, in the future, for, uh, if you like to have, if you have a big project, you not only have 
need the GPU, but you also need the high performance CPU. Not only GPU, but also CPU. And uh, you better to have a dual CPU and the multiple core. More core is uh, better because it can process the parallel, like a parallel processing. It can accelerate the whole processing in more efficiency. So the right now we have done seventy six percent. Yeah. If you have a big project, uh, like uh, more than uh, several thousand image, I also suggest you to use utilized cluster, like uh, uh, several computer and uh, connected to the same uh, same hard drive, and they will share. You will share a hard drive for all of the computer, and uh, you utilize the network processing, and you can have the uh, even better uh, processing efficiency. And you can see right now we only have uh, uh, less than uh, 20 photos and uh, it still takes a long time. Yeah, actually, right now it is already doing some uh, mesh processing, and uh, later I will show you the result by using the uh, dense crowd. Let me show you. I have already done some uh, result by using uh, dense crowd, dense point crowd generation. Okay, let me show you some uh, result I have done previously. So here you can see this is the the same result, but uh, this one is for a uh, dense point crowd only. And uh, you can see some hole, right? This is the because there are some occlusion between, and also uh, this there are some hole under the uh, the stone that's because our photo yeah. you can see this side is deck of uh, photos so it will cause some occlusions most of the photo are taken like uh, you will be on the in the air right so uh, in order to improve this problem you better to take photo horizontally in this direction Okay, right now I can also show you, uh, let's check about the result. Oh, still processing, sorry. So let's check about the result of the mesh. Oh. Sorry, this, in this case, I only have uh, a dense crowd. So I can show you another thing we call the confidence. So, so here you can see uh, on the low button part, there's a ribbon uh, from one to 100. So this is, uh, we call a confidence. The confidence means that uh, how, uh, for one type point, how uh, for one dense point crowd, uh, how many photo were observed. So if you have uh, one, that means you have one stair pair. So two, that means that you have uh, more, more stair pair that can create this point. So more photos, that means more, uh, more reliable result. So you can see the red part are uh, not reliable. And uh, actually the yellow is also not uh, reliable. So we can try to, you, you can use the tools, dense crowd, here we call filter by confidence. And uh, you can choose one, sorry, one. You can see this, the red part is only for one, uh, one stair pair. So not uh, uh, one, uh, only two photos actually. So uh, this is not reliable result. 
we can try to see a zero when the a minimized zero and the maximize two. So more uh, yellow point can be observed. So they, from my point of view, they are not uh, reliable. So generally, if you are using the UAV image, I suggest you to remove those low confidence point. You can choose, you can choose all of them and delete, delete. And uh, later, let's see all of them. So that the remaining part contains only reliable point. So there's no uh, no red point, no low low confidence point, right? So that is very uh, important uh, information to filter out the uh, the low confidence point. Some po sometimes if you have a water surface, you can also utilize this technology, these tools to remove point on the water surface because most of the water surface point are not reliable. Okay, let's check out. Oh, still processing. Yeah. Okay, now uh, let me demonstrate. Uh, uh, okay, so let's check out about the original type uh, 3D point here. So this is the remaining uh, higher reliable type point. So still some, uh, we can see more, more larger hole were observed. So that you, in the future, you can understand that is very important to, uh, to take photos. The most critical part is how to take a sufficient image to create a more complete result. Okay. Oh, it's right now generating the mesh. This is right now is uh, processing. I think uh, maybe I should not take the high accuracy, yeah, high quality, because it may take longer time to do the depth the map generation. So when you choose the high uh, ultra high, it will utilize the full resolution image, full image re resolution. If you choose the high accuracy, it will reduce the image, like an image pyramid from the very top, and then, then you reduce the image resolution uh, for one level. So originally, the, for example, the original image is 4,000 by 4,000. Then if you reduce one, it will use, utilize uh, 2,000 by 2,000. And if you, if you reduce one more time, it will call median. The median will reduce two times, so it will utilize uh, 1,000 by 1,000. So uh, uh, etc. you can understand the image resolution will be lower and lower and the, the, the total number of pixels will be reduced as well. So when you generate the depth image, it will be faster. However, the result will become smoother and the, the, the quality and the accuracy will be degraded and reduced. So however, it takes a long time if you utilize the ultra high accuracy. So, uh, Depend on your uh, requirement and your demand, you may choose a suitable uh, parameters and uh, to fit into your requirement. Sometimes it takes a long time, so uh, you better choose a high-end computer. Okay, we have done the mesh. So let's see, we don't have the type point. Oh, sorry, we don't have the dense point crowd. But we can uh, can see the three D model, and uh, you can see the hole already filled. Let's check check out the other part. You can see here originally the point crowd look like this, but right now they will fill. You can see here. 
Yeah, we can see the wireframe. There are there are some hole of already filled, so this look not like the same. Look not do you in this part? Okay, so as I mentioned that if you uh, only need the three D model, then you can move this part directly, and then you can conduct the field texture. So uh, here, the texture you only need to set the the parameter is the texture size and the how many texture you need. So the longer you will take longer time, uh, the larger you will take longer time. So anyway, right now I only utilize uh, one uh, one uh, one thousand by one thousand. Try to uh, accelerate the whole processing time. However, the the texture size, if you set it smaller, then you will obtain poor uh, image resolution result. So the image quality may be not good enough. Okay. However, uh, right now we we just try to do some practice, so we will not take long time to to do the to do the texturing. So right now it's also took long time because we have a lot of mesh. So that is another issue. So anyway, it should be balancing between the number of mesh and also the texture. Okay, you can see here we can have observed the marble textures. Okay. But if you look closer, it's look not clear because we only utilize uh, one thousand by one thousand. So you you may uh, need some experience how to define a suitable texture size. Yeah, right now we uh, for practicing uh, we we will not utilize too high resolution, but uh, I can. Yeah. Anyway, in this case you can uh, for practicing. I think that is sufficient. Right now, I want to uh, show you another uh, another example of a UAV. Here is the UAV image. I think you don't need to do that because uh, uh, I think uh, the time may be not sufficient for practicing. But uh, I will demonstrate the the result for you. Okay, this is the UAV data I give you. In the you can practice this later, and uh, in the meantime, I also give you the Okay, I, I in the Google in the Google Drive, I also give you the coordinate of the ground control point, so you can see here the control point are located on the the rooftop, the corner of the roof. There are five only, just only for practice. So uh, I can you can uh, you can import. You can import the ground coordinate from this panel here from this uh, import reference, but right now I don't uh, I don't do that for you. Uh, I just want to show you that after you import the UAV image, so you have to do something related to the coordinate. So in the beginning, we. Because our UV have a GPS, so in the beginning we have we can get the latitude, the longitude, and the altitude. But right now I already changed to TWD ninety seven. So how to do that is to use this function. Here is the function called convert. From the convert, you can change. You can change. 
So, so right now you can see the longitude, the latitude, and attitude. And also the control point were changed. So this, this project right now is in under WGS84. But, the, but the, from our experience, we, uh, from our demand, we always use the, utilize TWD97. So I can change, okay, I can convert. So you can see this right now is Eastin, Northin, Attitude. So before that, you also needed to set up some, uh, we call a priori data accuracy. Here you can see accuracy uh, on, in 10. 10, that means the initial Parisian air, area is about 10 meters. So right now, if you are using the RTK or PPK, the accuracy can be less than 10 centimeters. I mean, the error should be less than 10 centimeters. So then you should set up, you can utilize uh, on the right, in right click, you can select all of them and the right click and the utilize the modify. Okay, on the modify, you can change the accuracy in the east, the north, the attitude, or only the position accuracy or including the uh, omega phi kappa and the, the rotation accuracy. So right now we only change the accuracy for position. And uh, right now we are not using the RTK, so we should not change. If you are using RTK, you, you should change to uh, 0 0.1, okay, like uh, uh, 0 0.1. But any, anyway, right now we, we, should, we will not change. So I will leave 10 centimeter here. And the, for the control point, you also need to change the initial position accuracy. So the same, you can select all then and right click and the modify and the change the accuracy. So I set up it into a five centimeter. So assume uh, we are using the uh, RTK for a ground point uh, measurement. And uh, after tie point matching, you have to observe the projections. So you can see right now, in my in this case, I have uh, uh, more than one thousand five hundred tie point. So uh, in, in, you can see a lot of uh, tie point. This is the minimal one because in the beginning when I perform alignment. In the, in the beginning, I choose 10,000, so I can keep a, a lot of uh, a tie point. Okay, here the key point is uh, 10,000, and I did the tie point limit to zero. Sorry, here, you if you have the original uh, GPS position, you should choose the source. And uh, you, you better to choose generic presentation and the reference. Okay, so then it will accelerate the uh, type point matching uh, process. So anyway, right now I have already finished the uh, align photo and uh, I have already marked the control point. So I'd like to show you how to mark control point. So in the beginning, I set in import only the coordinate and the, the labels. And uh, you have to set up some of them as control point or checkpoint. So if you, there's a box, a checkbox, you can check or uncheck. And then uh, you can right click and the field of photos by, by markers. So it will automatically select, search the photos that cover your, uh, cover this control point. So I can see from the photos. Okay, so here you can see that it's a type point, a control point that I have already measured. So you better to mark all of them. Okay, so this example I didn't mark. Yeah, if you in, in, if you don't mark, it will become a blue, sorry, a gray, gray flakes. And then you have move, and then it will change to green. So let me show you. 
So for example, here, okay, it's ch changed to green, okay? And then you can, you can also observe how many photos are already marked. You can see this one has a 19 projection, this one has 14, this is a minima. So you can check again. So I have already marked all of them. And also you can see there's a uh, residuals. This can be shown by here. Oh, sorry, the residual is here is for the, the type point. But the, right now you can see that the arrows are in majorly in this direction and the different point has different lengths. Okay, so their errors are different for uh, each measurement. Okay, uh, when we doing the, uh, we have changed any markers or many uh, every uh, image measurement, we better to conduct area uh, triangulation. However, I like to uh, give you uh, one suggestion. So here I only have five type of control point. So generally we need to set up some checkpoint. But right now the distribution of the four the control point is not good enough. So you better to set up your control point at the boundary at the corner of the uh, image block. But the, right now my control point are only in the center part. This is not good. But uh, in the future, you have to uh, measure some control point better as it can distribute it everywhere, uh, like a, a three by three, okay? And that would be better. But right now, I only have five control point, so I will choose some of them as the uh, control point. So uh, I choose one, two, three, four, and uh, leave the five as the check. Yeah, you, you may also uh, choose the other point for a uh, checkpoint, but the, the distribution are not good. So anyway, right now I choose the type point uh, 5, MTP5 is the checkpoint. So I optimize again. So right now, uh, here in this case, I have uh, uh, previously, I have optimized all of them already. So right now you can see there's a error, uh, this is the initial position. Actually, this is the position of the control point. And you can observe the errors here, view errors. Okay, so you can check out the position errors on the X position, uh, east, uh, north, uh, and attitude. And you can see right now the position errors only two centimeters, less than three centimeters. And the checkpoint is less than uh, two centimeters. Yeah, I think that is very good result. However, you still need to check out uh, the measurement errors here. Yeah, you can also sort in. And uh, this point has contained 1.1 pixels. Yeah, I suggest you get uh, to understand uh, why it's larger than one pixel. So you may right click and the show info. And show from the show info, you can sort which photos can uh, have the large errors. So this photo, you can double click and check out, is there any measurement problem? Yeah, you have double check. If there's no problem, then you don't need to move. Maybe the error is come from the uh, lens detortion errors. So let's double check here, the camera calibration. So here in the beginning, the focal, uh, the initial value of the IOP, uh, only the focal lengths. The others are all in zero. And uh, after adjustment, they will give you another number. And uh, you you can right now those uh, parameters that you have already calibrated. And uh, if you like to, uh, if you don't need this kind, uh, some of the parameters are not necessary. So for example, maybe you can uncheck K4, and then you may uncheck P1, uh, uh, B1, B2. So anyway, we, we try to refine. 
okay but the, i think the result is getting worse you can see it's become to 1.38 so sometimes this is because of lens distortion i think uh, original uh, lens distortion parameters already uh, good enough uh, you can see that these errors has reduced so that means this is already the optimized result based on the cell calibration and uh, I'd like to give you one more suggestion if you'd like to do the camera calibration. Right now, you can see the ground object has a size as a building and, uh, and the sum of the terrain. So, there's a height elevation. So, this is not a flat terrain. So, in case this is a, in case this is a flat terrain, so there's no large height variation. So you better to have a uh, convergent, I mean, uh, taking photo in oblique and also uh, in different attitude. Right now, we only have one flight in one uh, elevation. So you better to have another or maybe the third, uh, three different elevation to, to take a photo for camera calibration purpose. In case this is a freight terrain. Okay, so and also if you like to have only one flight, and uh, you if you can take a public image, very very similar to this one. Here the the image are not totally vertical. Some of them are in a brick, yeah, but not uh, too large. Maybe uh, thirty degrees of a brick image can be uh, obtained the best result. So right now, this oblique image is not good enough in imaging geometry. But because the terrain is not totally flat, so I think the camera calibration result should be acceptable. OK, i like to, uh, uh, since the time is getting close to end, so i like to remind you that if you're doing the uh, air triangulation you have to double check something the first one is the uh, projections you have to check out the minimum number of projections should be larger than 100 and uh, the errors the of impact uh, the image measurement it should be a uh, larger a uh, smaller smaller than one pixels so one pic uh, some of the pictures though uh, larger than one pixels you better to uh, uh, dis uh, disable them and the double check if they are they all in high quality or not. Maybe not image quality problem. Maybe the other uh, lens distortion are not correct. Yeah, because you can see the image here, the, our image has a lot of uh, lens distortion. So the lens distortion, if don't, if you couldn't correct them precisely, it will still have a high higher uh, reprojection errors and uh, for the control point and checkpoint you better to locate them at uh, the uh, equally separated into the whole uh, process area and uh, put some of them at the corner as the control point and then maybe one coin in the needle and then the others as a checkpoint because our case right now we only have uh, five points in the middle so i couldn't uh, uh, demonstrate the result for you but however uh, that them, under this demonstration you can see that uh, the overall accuracy is uh, very uh, precise and uh, don't forget to uh, set up the pre-orized uh, pre standard errors according to what method that you are major uh, for the uh, control for the control point the checkpoint okay yeah i think uh, the time is is very close to the end so i am asking if you have any question yeah from the slide i also give you some information uh, how to do the uav image and uh, this is the uh, procedures I suggest. And uh, there are some 
information about the control point locations and uh, the result of the dense point crowd and uh, how we better to remove low point low confidence point crowd and in the in the end that you can also create also photo and the dsm yeah, maybe Here in this case, I already have produced the dense crowd. So in this case, you can produce the DEM and the field also image. Because this process is very uh, fully automatic, I think you can do that by your uh, own self. Okay, I think my presentation has uh, come to the end. I don't. Yeah, I'd like to know, is there any question from all of you? For example, there are two questions in Chaperon. Can you answer one? Do you see it? Uh, I found there's uh, some people asking question related to the to obtain slant angles image. I think uh, generally the UAV, when they take the photos, the camera are fixed. Generally, they will not move. This will cause problem in balancing the UAV. So generally, they don't rotate the camera. And if you like to take a public image, you better uh, rotate the camera before you take, uh, take off the UAV. Yeah, uh, and another people ask uh, how to detect the blur image. Yeah, I think my suggestion is already a good, uh, good uh, uh, com uh, suggestion. You can use in the reprojection errors to detect the uh, the blur image. Yeah, in case you have another uh, algorithm, image processing algorithm, you may be able to do the blur detection, then when you import into the, you, you can avoid those image. You can exclude those image before you import them into the meta shape. Uh, you, someone asked about the open source software. Actually, there are some uh, open source, but uh, uh, I, I have I don't remember the name uh, right now, but uh, there are some open source for the structure for motion and the form for the dense image matching as well. And uh, yeah, maybe later I, I will search it for you. Uh, is there any question? There's a software called Meshroom. 
and uh, open MVS. It's another one called Open MVS. Yeah, I hope that uh, understand the the knowledge of photogrammetry is not easy to describe in one hour. And uh, in the beginning, I was asked to give you the demonstration about the 3D modeling. So that's why today I. Uh, focus more on the practicing and uh, I also give you some of the tutorial and the data and uh, some procedures, SOP procedures. So I hope that you can practice by yourself. And uh, there are a lot of YouTube as well. <laughs> you can try to, uh, to, to learn uh, from the YouTube as well. Actually, I also learn a lot from the YouTube, from the new software. Uh, today, I only teach about the meta shape, and uh, uh, there's another one you can try to you call reality capture. Reality capture is also a good software, and uh, they have there are some uh, we call academic licenses. And uh, you can try to apply the academic licensing, and uh, but this this cap, uh, this software do not have uh, parallel processing, like a cluster processing capability. So then, yeah, the efficiency may be not good enough. And uh, but the the, ten, the dense match quality and the, the texture mapping quality is very good. Yeah, from my non to my knowledge, the matching is better than the matching result is better than the meta shape. I like it very much, but the the the, the efficiency is not good. <laughs> yeah, is there any question? Uh, what do you mean process the data in real time? You mean during the UV is flying? I think that is very difficult because as you know, the, the data is a lot. The data volume is huge. It's very difficult to transfer the image. Even process on the UOV, you need to have a computer, a, a very high performance and a, a lot of uh, power. That is very, very difficult. If you are using the airplane, that may be possible. Before you return, you can get the initial result, like a line photo result and a very coarse, coarse uh, 3D model, maybe. But uh, for UAV, I think that is very, very difficult. For airplane, it's possible. OK, any question? Yes, this, there's no further question. I think uh, we may end this talk. And uh, yeah, if you have a further question, then you can give me feedback as well. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lau. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
好，谢谢，谢谢，拜拜，谢谢，拜拜。Hello everyone. Please write down your answer word for last two questions. And if you have any question, you can also write down in this Google form or send an email for Professor Lau.